So I'm going to introduce one of my favorite human beings on the planet. Uh, Robin is someone I admire more than almost anyone. She's such a pure soul and she's always in service and always wanting to bring more light into the world. And I love how appropriate what she's going to share with us today. So Robin, please. Oh, thank you so much. I am also delighted to be here. I'm, I'm excited to have Ken with us today and to be together and really look at this whole, this whole frontier of courage. And I, and to get us started this morning, I would really love for us to just uh, all center and connect together in our hearts. So if you can just uh, close your eyes and take a few nice, slow cleansing breaths. <sighs> Letting go any thoughts or worries, anxieties, tensions, anything that won't be in service to you in the next couple hours here this morning. Be fully present. Feel your heart. Feel that beautiful, beautiful heart. Feel it coming into a slow rhythm. Noticing your breath. And just noticing yourself, relaxing and feeling calm. Invite yourself to open your heart and your mind, setting the intention to really have as much um, as much presence, but is also to receive and enjoy this morning in a, in a really beautiful way. And to support us in opening even further, I'm going to be sharing with you a blessing for the morning. This is from John, John O'Donohue. It goes like this. Blessed be the longing that brought you here and quickens your soul with wonder. May you have the courage to listen to the voice of desire. Desire that disturbs you when you have settled for something safe. May you have the wisdom to enter generously into your own unease to discover the new direction your longing wants you to take. May the forms of your belonging in love, creativity, and friendship be equal to the grandeur and the call of your soul. May you have the courage to listen to the voice of desire that disturbs you when you were settled for something safe. Now just uh, let yourself absorb those words and your, feel your own sense of courage in your own heart for another minute as we listen to the music. Reaffirming your own intention to open and get the most out of this morning, building your own sense of courage. So beautiful. Yeah, Love thank that. You. May, you, may you have the courage to listen to the voice of desire that disturbs you when you have settled for something safe. Love that. It's perfect. It's perfect for our speaker this morning, too. I'm excited to introduce to you Ken D. Foster. He's a keynote speaker and a business strategist, best-selling author, and the host of a show called Voices of Courage. It's a radio show that's syndicated in more than 162 countries. I didn't know there were 162 countries. That's amazing. <laughs> Ken empowers audiences to take the courageous path, let go of limitations, and generate unlimited success in business and life. 
He gets extraordinary results by empowering learners and leaders to stretch out of their comfort zones, redefine themselves and see the unseeable, know the unknowable and do the impossible. His latest book is The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Essential Wisdom to Awaken Your Inner Genius. I can't wait. So welcome, Ken, take us away. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be here with you today. I just Googled it. There's 195 countries, by the way, right now. So yeah, it was surprising to me when they started to put those numbers out there like that. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my passion, which is uh, courage. And Diana talked a little bit about it early on. She said it comes from our heart, uh, from the Latin word cur, which, which means to speak one's heart. But I'm going to go into a little more depth of that. And I think by the end of this, I hope to inspire greatness in you to become even a better version of yourself at the end of this. So I'm excited to be with all of you this morning. So, you know, my journey started in uh, about 1992 when I woke up and I was in uh, therapy for, uh, for about a year. And uh, I was working with this amazing therapist. Uh, I never forget him. He was, uh, he was kind of a Jungian therapist. He had these steel blue eyes. And one day I walked into his office and I said to him, hey, doc, um, I'm hearing this little voice in my head. You ever heard a voice in your head, right? I'm hearing this voice in my head. It says you've got to feel the pain to make the change. And I, he said to me, what, what is that? You've got to feel the pain to make that? I said, yeah. He looked at me and in that moment, he says, Ken, I can't do anything more for you. You need to follow that voice. And as I walked, can you imagine this? As I walked out of his office thinking, what the heck is going on? I'm, I'm hearing this voice and he's telling me to follow this voice. Well, of course, as we all know, that was the voice of courage. That was the voice of wisdom and that was the voice of truth. And about uh, a day later, I walked into a recovery center at that time and my life completely changed. So that's where I started. And it was a courageous path. It's a, it's a path that a lot of uh, people don't take, right? But what is courage? What is that? What is that, that essence of that, that, uh, that courage brings to us? Well, here's what I've found. You know, we, we talk about frequency, at least I like to talk about frequency and the rate of vibration that constitutes either a wave or a particle, it can be a sound wave, it can be electromagnetic wave, you know, we've, we've heard about frequency, you know, therefore, you know, free, frequency really is the rate at which things vibrate. Now, we've probably heard that before, right? Things that, you know, but think about this, you know, words vibrate too. So words have a vibration to them. And the courage specifically has a vibration to it. What is the vibration of courage? Well, think about, first of all, the vibration of fear. Think how you feel when you're shut down, when you're fearful, when things aren't going your way. You're afraid that you're going to lose something. You're not going to get what you want. You're, you don't feel that fear. Well, courage is like the opposite of that, right? Courage is the bridge that takes us from fear to, to joy, to happiness, to, to faith. It takes us from failure to success. It takes us from living a mediocre uh, life to a life of joy and happiness. So it's an expansive feeling within ourselves. It is a rate of vibration, it is an energy that flows through us. So just for a moment, just for a moment, imagine if you were really courageous in these next 30 days, like Diana suggested, right? Imagine if you stepped into that feeling, you had that feeling of courage every day. What would your life be like? Would it be different? You know, here's the cool thing with all of you. You've been on this path for a long time. You realize that you have gone through a lot of challenges. You've gone through a lot of, lot of uh, growth and evolution. Courage is the bridge that'll help you take to you to the next level of evolution for your soul. Imagine that. Imagine if you were able to up-level your life today in this moment. What would have to happen for that to happen for you? Well, I can, I can tell you that. 
it is courage that's going to do that. It's going to bridge the, the, the gap that you may be walking across. So you know, we asked you what you want in the next 30 days, right? What is, it that, what is that desire that's in your heart that you really want in the next 30 days? You know, maybe it's a financial goal. Maybe it's a goal with a relationship with your family, your friends. Um, maybe it's a, uh, a health thing. You want, you want to have greater health. You want to feel more vibrant. You want to feel like you're on fire again, like you're in your 20s. Well, can you do that? Can, can that happen for you? Of course it can. Um, you know, neuroscience has revealed to us how certain thoughts release chemicals in our, in our brain, right? Courage happens to be one of those thoughts. You know, words do matter, as we all know. But do we know that words release chemicals in our brain? Right. So if you're thinking to yourself, you know, today I'm going to stay courageous. I'm going to I'm going to do things that I've never done before. And I'd like to even challenge you. I'd love to this challenge. If you'd like to increase your courage, there's one way you can do that. You do something you've never done before every day for the next 30 days. One thing you've never done before. Maybe you go try some uh, a new fruit that you've seen in the grocery, you've never seen it before, but you're going to go try it. I remember when I was living in Hawaii, there were a lot of different fruits and vegetables and all kinds of things I'd never seen before. And so I had to get out of my comfort zone to go try them. You know, but maybe it's something, you know, with your family. Maybe you've never uh, discussed a certain topic before, something you've never done before. Maybe for some of you, you know, it's time to get back into the gym or back out outside and, you know, take off the mask and go, go exercise. That you haven't done that for a year. Maybe you've done it before, but you haven't done it like you're going to do it now. So I challenge you to, to really do that because if you do, what's going to happen, you will not only develop your courage, you develop yourself. I want to say this with courage. I, I ask myself, maybe you ask yourself this too. Uh, why is common sense so uncommon in the world? You ever think about that? Why does it seem to be so uncommon? Well, for me, it's intuition. You know, a lot of common sense is another word for intuition, right? So most people have undeveloped intuition. You see, it takes courage to develop that intuition, doesn't it? It takes courage to follow our heart, follow the, the, uh, those little still small voices that the psychologist told me to follow. It's, it's, you, we can hear them, it's easy to tap into them most of the time, but do we really wanna follow them? So I want you to think right now of something in your life that you wanna let go of, something that just is not working for you. I don't know what that is, but you know what it is. Again, think about it just for a second. What would have to happen for you to release that permanently? completely. Well, one of the gifts I'm giving away today is uh, I have a process called the release process, and I've developed it over 20 years. And uh, Diane is going to be able to deliver that to you. This process will help you to whatever that is that is stopping you from having more joy, more happiness, more money, more wealth in your life, whatever that is, that, that thing that's stopping you, you know, will be released once you do that exercise. You know, I always think of source like this. I always think that source is like a hose. You ever, you ever have a, you know, you go out and go water your hose, your garden out there. And if you ever get a kink in your hose, right, all of a sudden you have to go and unwind the hose and undo the kink. Well, listen, the hose is like the universe. The source, the, the water is always flowing through us, right? But sometimes we have a kink in there. You know, you have a, something's kink in it, right? What's the kink? It's usually your belief. It's usually something you have to let go of or embrace or develop or grow into. And we all know this, but you know, these kind of workshops like this today, this is a really time to really reflect and go within and say, all right, you know, there's a bottleneck in my life. What is that bottleneck? What is that bottleneck there for? What is it teaching me that I need to learn? Maybe I need to release something today, or maybe I need to do Ken's release exercise because it's been chronic for me. Whatever this chronic piece is, I haven't been able to let go of that. So whatever that is for you, today's the day to increase your courage, to step into a higher frequency and to be able to let that go. You know, I had a, I had a monk that I was working with for a while and um, his name was Eduardo. And Eduardo was, uh, he was a monk of the Self-Realization Fellowship uh, path for 20 some years. 
And Eduardo uh, was a big, uh, a big proponent of uh, frequency. And him and I got together. I'll never forget, we were in Las Vegas one day and we were doing a workshop. And, you know, we're in Sin City, right? We're in, we're in, the, we're in the capital of it. It was just amazing. And here we are, we're meditating. We're bringing this energy, this vibration to this incredibly high level. And I'll never forget walking through the casinos with Eduardo. And we're, we're, almost, we're almost out of body because we're so high in this frequency. Well, I want to tell you how we got to that frequency really quick, because I think it's, it's something where we, we need to live from on a daily basis. And we started out that way. Robin did that beautiful meditation for us. So what is this, the, the key to that is starting at the zero point, right? The zero point. Because that zero point for me, I've been a, a meditator since 1992, since I walked out of that psychiatrist's office. And that, that energy of being able to stay, sit in the stillness, what happens, of course, is the mind is overrated, isn't it? Right? The brain is way overrated and the mind is definitely overrated. So what we want to do is we want to go a little higher than that and connect into into the soul, into the spirit. So that's where I start. But then the other piece that I like to do, and we're starting this today, is once after that meditation is done, I like to set a noble intention. How about you? What's the noble intention? I win, you win, the universe wins, the communities win, right? A noble intention. Why is intention so powerful and so important for all of us? Well, I believe that uh, Dr., uh, or not Dr., but uh, Lynn McTaggart wrote a book called The Power of Eight. I bet you a lot of you have read it. If not, you've heard of Lynn McTaggart. If you haven't, what you want to know about that book is that uh, she did a lot of research around frequency and around energy and around being able to um, take our intentions and put it in specific areas and get results, right? But she didn't just study individual intentions, she studied collective intention. And what she really found out is that individual intention is great. You all set your individual intentions, right? But when we get together as a group, as a collective group, and we all hold intention for one another, that's where the magic happens. And we do this on a consistent basis. My mastermind groups, I started doing this two years ago in my mastermind groups. I wanna tell you the, the results, uh, I, I don't know if we call it quadruple, but they, they, they were more than quadruple. We got results in our groups that were exponentially greater than we've ever had in any of my masterminds over the years as a direct result of everybody holding that intention for each other. Uh, it, it, miracles, magic, synchronicity started happening with that. Well, why is that? Why is that? Well, you know, um, it's biblically, right? To where two or more gathered, there, therefore I am, or the source is there, right? So I want you to think about that, even as the inside edge, maybe to be able to create that together as a group where you're all holding intention for the group, right? Even right now, look at one person that you see in the group right now, and think and, and hold an intention for them in your heart that you think might be of their highest and best value for that individual. Just think about it for a second. Stop for a second. Think of the individual. Go ahead and set your intention for them. Also, expect amazing things to happen. Now, people are setting intention for you right now. They're, they're, we're all connected. We're all up-leveling each other in this moment. So imagine you're, today, today might be an amazing day for you. In fact, you may have some breakthroughs that are really going to take you to the next level. One of the other pieces with the, with the monk and I, what we do, like to do is we like to set that uh, frequency at a high state. How do we get there? Well, courage is the first step. We step into our courage. But one of the other high frequency words, and words matter, right? Because they're all energy, is wonder. I love the word wonder. When we go into wonder, I wonder how amazing my life is going to be today as a result of being at the inside edge. I wonder how much joy and happiness and money is going to flow through me as I step into wonder in greater and greater ways. Wonder is a frequency. We want to step into that frequency. The next frequency I want to uh, discuss is awe, A-W-E. Have you ever stood beside the ocean and just been in awe of a sunset? Or stood at the Grand Canyon and been in awe of the vastness of the canyon? Have you ever been in a place where maybe you've had an experience, and maybe even a spiritual experience, and you're just in awe of everything? 
Awe is a frequency. It's a vibration that we hold within ourselves. So when you take your, you, you live from awe, why don't you, how about today? We all live from wonder and awe. Imagine what that would be. We're going we're gonna to look for things we've never done before. We're going to be wondering how it can get better than this. How can it get better than that? I always love Gary Douglas's question from Access Consciousness. How can it get better than this? Right? That's just an amazing question. It's such a simple question. And yet, when we ask it on a consistent basis, oh my gosh, miracles happen, right? Things happen for us. So I'm going to, I'm going to, leave you with this. I think I'm about out of time. I'm going to leave you with this. I was in Hawaii with my granddaughter. Her name is Ella and she's about 10 years old at the time. And I said to Ella, I said, Ella, let's go on a journey. Let's go on a journey and start looking for things we've never seen before. And why don't we just ask that one question? How does it get better than this? And Ella wanted to connect with some of the, uh, the uh, Hawaiian ladies at the time. And the first thing that happened for her as we, as we took this little walk by the ocean is one of the, uh, one of the ladies came up to her. She, she just stopped. Ella had these, just a beautiful child, blonde hair with these beautiful brown eyes. And a lady walks up to her and says, Ella, I want to acknowledge you. This is out of the blue, right? <laughs> I want to acknowledge you. She acknowledges her and she gives her a lay right? That's how we start. And then as we go, we start, we walk across this bridge and there's all these tropical fish that Ella has never seen, giant eels and beautiful colored fish. And she's in awe. She's in wonder. How's this even happening? And then we walk a little further and she finds this pond in the, in, uh, in the ocean that's been carved out where she can just sit and the waves are breaking over her. And she's looking at me like, this is amazing. I've never experienced this in my life. And we walk a little further and we find this hammock. But this hammock is, is between two palm trees. And she says, I want to get in the hammock, Grandpa. I said, OK, come on in. And I get her up there. And next thing we know, the ocean is breaking underneath her in this hammock. And she's just in wonder. She's amazed. I can see her eyes. I can feel it in her. And she says, Grandpa, how does it get better than this? And as we walk back, several uh, additional things started happening with us. But, you know, it, it's all an inside job. You know, it, it's for us if we take the, if we have the courage to allow ourselves to live in awe, live in wonder, live in our brilliance, life gets better and better every day in every way. I wrote a book. It's called, uh, you can put it up on the screen if you'd like, uh, who's ever there. It's called The Courage to Change Everything. It's daily strategies and essential wisdom to awaken our inner genius. And the reason that I wrote that book, and in fact, I'll, I'll just put it out here for you. The reason I wrote that book is because I realized, and maybe you realized at this point in your life, is that we don't need, uh, we don't need inspiration or wisdom uh, here and there. We need it every single day, all of us do. We need to start our day with wisdom and, and, and understanding. It took me about six years to write that book. This is my seventh book. The reason it took so long is I wanted to, I, I, I researched the wisdom from the ages and the wisdom from all the countries around the world, from the sages and, and the individuals that really had that vibration, that frequency of understanding, wisdom, and courage. And I've infused that book with that. And then I also, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a master at asking the right question to get the mind to go in the right direction. So I infused it with those questions. When I say I'm a master, my first book was called Asking You Will Receive, a thousand and one ordinary questions to create extraordinary results. So those questions I've learned how to help you to focus your mind and get it in the pointed in the right direction. So I just want to tell you about that because when you buy that book today, by the way, um, I not only give you a book, an incredible book that you'll be so joy filled when you read that, but what happens is you'll also have two sessions with me called the Limitless Experience. So I give you two sessions with me and my group when you purchase the book. How cool is that? Plus, uh, you're going to get the release set, uh, 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 the release uh, process um, today also. So. You got the release process. You're going to live in wonder and awe. You've got a new tool to use in your life. I pray that.
that you take advantage of that and up level your life. All of us can use astute wisdom, joy, and more happiness in our life. So I hope that uh, you'll take me up on that. I'm so happy to be here, Robin. Thank you for allowing me to uh, uh, be here. Diana, you've created the most amazing event. Uh, 35 years. Congratulations. It's, it's, Thank you. It's so I'm so, I'm jazzed. I'm feeling really encouraged already from, from all the things that you've been saying. And and I love living in wonder. That's that's my one of my favorite words. And I also am becoming even more aware now with all the changes taking place in my life that it's so important that I start the day, you know, with one of these questions, one of these quintessential questions uh, that you mentioned, you know, like I, I asked myself, where's the most joy to be found today? Um, I, can you go on a little bit more about living in the question and how that affects frequency and all of that? Absolutely. You know, again, you know, words matter and questions matter. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, you, you know, you, uh, Jack Canfield uh, wrote the forward to that book, to the uh, ask and uh, you will receive. And, uh, you know, Jack, Jack inspired that book. I remember him telling me the uh, story of him and Mark Victor Hansen uh, when they were trying to get the uh, uh, book title for Chicken Soup for the Soul. And they asked the question over and over and over and over again, right? And they finally, you know, I think the question was, what, uh, what would be a mega best-selling uh, book title? And I remember, I think it was Jack that woke up in the morning and went, ah, I got it. So, you know, questions do matter, but, you know, we're always asking questions of ourselves. And, you probably heard this before. I'll just say it because I think it's pertinent. You know, we have about 60,000 thoughts a day, right? Social scientists tell us that. And we have about the same 60,000 thoughts the next day and the next day and the next day, unless we break the pattern by asking powerful questions. Mm -hmm. So one question for you might be, if you, uh, what would have to happen for me to have a quantum breakthrough in the area of whatever you're working on right now? What would have to happen for me to have a quantum breakthrough in relationships or what can I do to, what are the three steps I can take today to increase my courage, to step into my one, to step into wonder and awe? Those mm -hmm. kind of questions will focus our mind in the direction of our dreams. And mm -hmm. if we, you know, it, for me, um, it's a habit. It's a habit. Um, I have a habit of every day in the morning, how I start my day. I start my day when my eyes open up, I go to gratitude. I think about what I'm gra grateful for in bed. Mm -hmm. I tense, relax my body, and then I give my mind a command. My body is awake and ready. That's what I do every day. Then I get up and I start my day. So those old habits can really help us. Well, habits of, of using the mind in a positive direction will also do the same thing. So those questions that, uh, Di that Diana and I are talking about are right in the book, The Courage to Change Everything. And for those of you, I didn't tell you where to get it. Is it okay to tell them where to get it, Diane? Please go ahead, yes. Okay, they can get that at couragetochange.us. Courage to change dot us. Courage to change us. Courage to change dot us. So I hope you'll take me up on that. Okay, I am writing that down before I'm gonna tell you my next question. I'm happy you mentioned Jack. He was at our 35th anniversary gala. And I think one of the most exciting things that he said was that the Chicken Soup for the Soul series wouldn't exist without the Inside Edge because of the people he met there and, and just all the things that happened. It was really exciting. Uh, you mentioned that you'd been meditating. I've been meditating since 1970 when I was initiated. <laughs> Were you born then? <laughs> I'm just no, older than No, you. I wasn't born then. <laughs> well, maybe I was, but I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> OK. Uh, but I like the fact that you said that following meditation, that we can set a noble intention. I, would you elaborate a little more on that? I really love that. Yeah, noble intentions. You know, noble intentions, I think, are where most of us are in our in our life right now. You know, we're here to, you know, not only evolve ourselves, we're here to contribute and to give back. And noble intentions are just that. It's about creating an intention that you win, uh, your, your family might win, your community wins, um, or your customers might win. Everybody wins. And I believe that's really where we're all going as a society. I think we're stepping into understanding that we are all connected. We are all one. We are all uplifting ourselves or tearing ourselves down by what we focus on and what we think. So noble intentions for me would be something like, 
Oh, what, what, let me think. Uh, I got so many of them. <laughs> I think the um, uh, in noble intention would be when I wrote my book, for instance, my book was to, uh, to inspire greatness in others, to be able to create a book that would really, when somebody reads it, they would read it and they would be in awe, they would be in wonder, they would be in a, in a courageous place to take their lives and their dreams to the next level. So for me, it wasn't about selling books. It's great to sell books. Don't get me wrong. I love I love money and just as much as probably you're the next person. But the intention was to get it out into the world in the hands of millions of people and for those in the, to be able to do my part in uplifting the, pro, the uh, planet. So I hope, I hope that gives you an idea. It does. You know, I really find that when I'm, uh, instead of getting focused on my needs or my wants or anything like that, if I can just somehow be a fountain uh, of, of joy or goodness or spark joy in somebody else. My late husband used to walk in the neighborhood and just say something funny to people, you know, as he was going by and, and they would just respond. Everybody wants to connect, don't you think? And if I, just, I do think everybody yeah. wants to connect. I remember I was working with uh, actor Dennis Weaver, and uh, for the, if it, uh, this is a date myself, but uh, he uh, uh, he was the uh, star of Gunsmoke and McLeod and uh, head of the Screen Actors Guild, 80, 80 uh, movies to his credit. And uh, Dennis came in and he had a noble goal, noble intention, a noble goal. His goal was to take his company at Colonomics to uh, the next level, which is the combination of ecology and economics. And uh, he was stuck. So he came to me, he said, what do we do? And I said, well, um, we, let's put all of your Hollywood buddies on a phone call with us at the time, a conference call, and let's mastermind together. And he was like, mastermind, what's that? I said, well, just follow me with this, we'll do this. And um, we, we got on the phone together and it was so amazing. I think it was the second call that a friend of his got on and says, hey, listen, I'm gonna see President Clinton the next, uh, the next, uh, in the next three days. And Dennis said, well, I don't know Clinton. Why would he care about the economics? And uh, I said to Dennis, I said, stop, stop. Let's just listen to where we can go here. And the next person said, well, I can write a letter. And uh, Dennis said, well, okay, all right, write a letter, we'll get it to Clinton, I doubt if he'll, he'll do anything. Well, Bill Clinton, called, uh, as the president, called Dennis a week later and said, you're my childhood hero. What can <laughs> I do to help you to take economics to the next level? And he invited him to Washington, D.C. to meet him and Hillary and, and, and uh, meet, he was having an a energy czar conference from all the energy czars around the world. And it took his business to a completely new level all started with a noble goal, a noble intention to help the world in a greater way. I love it. You know, we have a history with uh, Dennis Weaver because the Inside Edge was born out of a trip into the Soviet Union uh, where I travel with my late husband uh, to the Soviet Union with Dennis Weaver, Mike Farrell from MASH, uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard, all of these people. And that's what happened there was that these people started just kind of mentioning their dreams and goals. And somebody there would say, oh, I can introduce you to so-and-so, or why don't you try this? And magic began to happen. That's what the inside edge has been. It's been a catalyst for connection where people share their visions and their dreams or their goals. And we all hold that space, like you were mentioning earlier with Lynn McTaggart. We hold that space for magic to, to be happening in their lives. So that's very, very encouraging. And Dennis was one of the recipients of one of our first uh, humanitarian awards that we gave. And um, so you weren't dating yourself at all. Well, good. Yeah, no, I, I, and I don't mind to date myself. I don't, it doesn't really matter at this point. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Dennis, uh, what, a, what an amazing man he was, you know, and, and I'm so happy to hear that uh, you had the history with uh, the Inside Edge with Dennis. Uh, he was my one of my childhood heroes, and I was so blessed to get to work with him. Um, and my, you know, actually, my wife Judy is the one that uh, actually connected with him. Um, some of you know Judy; she has an organization called Women's Wisdom. So, oh, really, I don't even know about that. So, I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, she's been doing it in San Diego. What you've been doing up here in Orange County? So, wow. Purpose. Well, we even used to have a chapter in San Diego, which was really quite amazing too. Um, who else are, are some of your favorite heroes? Well, you know, one of my one of my favorite heroes is uh, 
uh, is Tony Robbins, actually. I mm -hmm. got to, uh, I worked with Tony back in 1999. And um, I'll never forget that I was up in his, um, his office one day. He was late for a meeting with me. And I thought, you know, what, what makes Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins? What does this guy read? What does he do? I'll never forget looking at his bookshelf. And he had about 10 books uh, on the shelf and they were all from the same author. And I thought, who is this guy? And the author was a guy by the name of Paramahansa Yogananda, right? Yes. So, <laughs> so really? the, next, the next week I'm, I'm at a garage sale at, in, in Encinitas and, uh, and sure enough, there must be, you know, every book that Yogananda has ever written, every tape and they were, I said, well, how much you want for it? He said, well, $25. And I thought, well, why not? Why not? That's, that's where things shifted for me. When I, I know. Learned about for, me, that for me too, or earlier. I'm going to turn this over to Robin now because she's, we're going to have a breakout session from what everybody's been hearing here. And it's really fun, everybody. So Robin, tell us what we're going to be doing. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So we get a chance now to take, you know, all of this great uh, inspiration we've had this morning so far into making it a little more personal in a breakout session. We're going to have a little collective time with a few other people, three, three people, four minutes each, like we see up here. And we do want to, someone in you guys to keep your own time within your group. Here's a couple of ideas for how you can spend your time. What, um, one of the questions is what was, um, what has to happen for you to be able to tap into your, your noble courage, you know, your real courage in life? What, what is in the way? What has to happen for you to really unlock that or reveal that or in, uh, inspire that uh, free flow of courage for yourself? Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you all had fun in your groups. And if you want to give a reaction, if you had a good time, show us a little hit thumbs up or heart or something. I certainly had an enjoyable time with my, my buddies. And uh, we have now an opportunity to, um, to put in the chat, if just, uh, if you want to just put a word or two, if there was a break, a breakthrough, a uh, you know, a takeaway from that time that you just spent with your friends in the chat? Or was it a word or two about how that was for you? Um, partly that helps us to know if these breakout rooms are something people are getting a lot of value in uh, and we want to continue doing. Um, so I'm going to say for me, I, our group, we had one person that was just so tender and genuine. It was just warmed my heart and gave me courage to say more about what I really was looking at. And uh, I think we really did lift each other to another level. So I experienced that idea of how as a collective, we really uh, up our frequency, you know, in and support each other and in, in going to another place. So if you have questions that you want to put in the chat for Ken, that's fine too. Amy can monitor that. I just wanted to ask Ken, what is the most courageous thing you've ever done? Oh, uh, by far uh, the uh, uh, taking the spiritual path and uh, learning to go within. And uh, for me, I had to let go of a lot of uh, beliefs. I was raised Catholic and a uh, wonderful path for me. I really enjoyed being Catholic at the time, but at some point it just stopped working. And for me, I had to really look at, uh, I had to make peace with my religion. I had to make peace with my family. At one point, I made peace with uh, my country. At one point, I made peace with myself. And that just took a lot of courage to do that, to let go of a lot of uh, ways that I was brought up, traditions, habits. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that happened overnight. <laughs> it, it took many years. Uh, but as somebody said in the chat room, you know, I work daily on looking at my, my, my uh, thoughts in my life. And I do a lot. Yeah, I think I learned this from Barbara DeAngelis probably 20 years ago. Um, she said, you know, if you, if you have an upset or if you have something that doesn't go your way, just replay it. Replay it in your mind again and again, right? So it's not about, you know, being a perfect human being. None of us are that. Um, we're all learning, growing, and evolving. But it's about that piece where... Okay, I made a mistake. I, I reacted in, in a way I didn't want to react. 
Um, it takes courage to, of course, go back within and replay it. And then, you know, if we owe an apology, it takes courage to go make those apologies. I, I probably made, I, I don't know how many apologies I've made in my life, maybe 10,000 <laughs> at least. Um, but I, I make a practice of that because it releases the energy of it. And, and once that energy is, then I can, then I can rise back up and, and stay in that high frequency, which I do on a very consistent basis these days. Oh, thank you for sharing that. You know, uh, Barbara was probably our most popular speaker. She got an award for that uh, this past year. And uh, she is truly inspiring about, and, and making apologies, that's so great. Um, in your book, you talk about, uh, being aware of our inner genius. Can you speak a little bit more about that? So oh, you know, we, we uh, thank you for bringing that up. That was something that I really wanted to touch on with the group. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, we, we grew up in a society that uh, you only have Einstein's or geniuses. Well, of course, that's not true. We all have an inner genius. Uh, the question comes, though, how do we tap into our own inner genius? And, you know, I, I gave you some of the tools today to do that by, uh, you know, looking, walking into the unknown, doing things that you've never done before. Um, I think one of the other ways, like I'm a triathlete, I'm, you know, I still uh, compete. And um, so, uh, in fact, in uh, 2017, I was able to compete in uh, British Columbia. And uh, there were 3,500 athletes from around the world. Um, somehow, not only did I get top 10 in the world in my area, but uh, I also got on the cover of Triathlon Magazine. I'll tell you how I did that. When the cameraman was taking pictures, I was feeling joy in my heart, total joy and gratitude. And they picked that energy up. That's exactly why I got on that cover. So, um, but uh, inner genius, it's for me, it's putting ourselves, when I wrote the book, The Courage to Change Everything, I didn't know how that book was going to come out. When I wrote my first book, I didn't know how it was going to come out. I didn't even know how to write it. I was a poor speller, a <laughs> very poor speller. Thank goodness for a spell check. <laughs> but, um, you know, I stepped into that. And what happens when we're in that zone, as you all know, a lot of you have been in that zone a lot. You know, you start to get the downloads. You start to get the inner truth that comes through and flows through us. So it's not about, you know, is it there or is it not there? It's how do you stay in that, in that vibration on a consistent basis so that energy flows through continuously. And I think, you know, I touched on, the, you know, intuition briefly, but the goal is to, you know, to develop your intuitive faculties, which means you're connected to your, your uh, soul, right? Because intuition comes from the soul to be able to stay in that faculty on a consistent basis, no matter what's going on around us, right? No matter how many people are, you know, are coming at you, you know, are you calm inside? Are you, are you, are you feeling a sense of fulfillment inside of yourself? That's the key. At least that's the key in my life. Wow. I, I think we could talk to you all day. This has been really, really valuable. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about, again, about how to order your book and how to, uh, get the, all those extra things that we get if we order today and, and your TV podcast and all of that. How can we find out more about sure. your Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to find out more about the book, again, you can probably, I think it was in the chat at one point, courage to change.us. And when you purchase the book uh, right now, I've reduced the price from 35 to 20. It's a hardback. It's a 400 pages. But I would, I would say you don't read 400 pages. You just read it page a day. You keep it simple. My life is very simple. I'm a Zen guy. I like things simple. So uh, if you want to get that, that'd be great. Also, if you'd like to listen to my uh, show, it is called Voices of Courage. You can tell Alexa, Cortana, or Siri to play Voices of Courage podcast if you're uh, technically savvy. If not, you can just go to courage to change dot, uh, voices of courage dot us, voices of courage dot us. And you can get all of our replays or you can find us on YouTube or Spotify or iHeartRadio just about anywhere at this point. So hope you'll just tune in, listen to us. We got some great guests. And by the way, I'm always looking for amazing guests. So if you have a recommendation or maybe that's you, please reach out to me at ken at kendfoster.com. Ken at kendfoster.com and love, love to hear from you. Okay, and we, we are seeing your triathlon cover there that Rebecca just did. And your Clubhouse Weekly Events, what's that? 
Oh yeah, Clubhouse. Um, so I'm on Clubhouse on uh, Wednesday, oh, excuse me, Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> where am I today? Sorry, Tuesdays. <laughs> Tuesday is at 6 p.m. on Clubhouse, Voices of Courage. Uh, I also have a new TV show that I'm uh, bringing into the world. It's a cross between uh, uh, America's Got Talent and Songland. And uh, we're bringing a spoken word artist uh, to the stage in a competitive TV show where they'll uh, compete for $250,000 in prizes. So if you're a word artist, you're uh, you uh, or you know a poet or a word artist, uh, come on to uh, come on to face uh, to Clubhouse next week and uh, and pitch me, and we'll see if we can't uh, get you on the show. We're looking for 60 right now. 60 contestants so how do um, we get to clubhouse tell me again oh okay clubhouse um two two ways um if you're not on clubhouse uh, they just open it up for android and for uh um for uh, uh ios so you if you if you need an invite just uh just email me i'll send you an invite so ken at kendfoster.com it's an invitation only app but i will say this it's uh, it is the next generation, and even a lot of you going. I don't want another social media app. This is the one you do need to be on. Um, this is the one that is going to replace Twitter. In my in Facebook and Twitter will either have their own apps like Clubhouse, or they will be replaced by Clubhouse. It is it is that powerful. Wow, I'm going to check that out. That's really intriguing. I want to just thank Ken so much. I think this was a particularly inspiring morning, certainly for me. And, and the people in our breakout room, I think, were really, really gaining value. So you bring so much to people you work with. And we're grateful you chose us to be with us this morning. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Robin for final words there. Yeah. I'll invite Ken first, if there's anything you have you'd like to share with us, any final comments, Ken? Yeah, I'm just really grateful to be here this morning. I felt that energy, that presence that we just did. Thank you for that. That was uh, very inspiring. And, you know, the, um, the only thing I'd leave you with is, is just a, a moment of courage. Take a moment of courage every day. That's it. You know, ask yourself, if I were courageous, what would I do today?